And uh, uh, finally, uh, or uh, liberation into completion, uh, means uh, that uh, um, uh, because of the intrinsic awareness, you know, Rangjung Rigpa, intrinsic awareness, then whatever uh, we uh, experience in relation to three times, you know, in, to, in terms of our past, in terms of our present experiences, and in terms of our future experiences. Uh, all of these experiences actually uh, uh, are taking place in a, some kind of like a primordial space. Uh, a primordial space uh, uh, and a primordial time. So that uh, uh, the um, concept of three times, <coughs> the concept of past, present, and future does not enter into it. So whenever something arises in the present time, for instance, uh, or something arises in relation to the past or the future, it becomes liberated into that state of uh, primordial uh, you know, uh, space, which is called uh, liberation into the completion, uh, uh, state of completeness. And um, uh, so the notion of self-liberation then has to be understood in relation to these uh, three other uh, forms of uh, liberations that are spoken of. And uh, these are sort of very quite difficult uh, concept to un concepts to understand, but uh, I think uh, you know, uh, it's worth um, uh, point, you know, mentioning them. Uh, even though I may not have succeeded in clarifying anything, um, at least you know that uh, uh, the Rangdro belongs to this uh, whole class of the notion of uh, liberation. You know, liberation into nakedness, liberation into um, primordial space and uh, uh, so forth. So, uh, if this has, been, has confused you, then <laughs> uh, I'm uh, sorry, but um, uh, but um, um, yeah. So okay. Now, in terms of the pasana. So in terms of, of Vipassana, that's precisely what we are trying to aim at, uh, uh, trying to sort of uh, activate the intrinsic awareness on the one hand, and then uh, try to self-liberate all the delusory mental states on the other hand. So that, uh, you know, so that's what we are trying to sort of uh, uh, do uh, 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 at the same time in terms of Vipassana practice. And what this then means is, it is not just a simply a case of uh, 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 dealing with our thoughts, uh, with awareness. You know? uh, there's, a, uh, there's a big difference here uh, between uh, normal types of meditation or, or Vipassana meditation, for instance, 
where we use awareness to um, deal with thoughts and uh, this type of idea of uh, activating intrinsic awareness so that uh, the um, deluded mental states become self-liberated. Uh, uh, this idea, you know, is actually uh, it, it goes uh, uh, deeper because uh, uh, the uh, awareness uh, is not a mental act in this instance, you know, um, and uh, the uh, thoughts. Uh, and so, for this reason, in Mahamudra teachings. It says that the uh, intrinsic awareness and the natural state of being is Dharmakaya. Dharmakaya means authentic state of Buddha's being. And uh, the, uh, 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 the um, thoughts and so forth, the uh, experiences that we have, the appearances, the so-called appearances, and the appearances in this context means uh, uh, not just uh, appearance of the phenomenal uh, uh, phenomena, but appearance of you know mental phenomena as well. Thoughts, ideas, emotions, all of these things are also called appearances. Now these are then called uh, the uh, radiance of the uh, light of the. Uh, <clears throat> and. Um, and I'm sure, uh, you know, who knows, maybe uh, some are even missed, you know. <laughs> <coughs> uh, maybe we have to revise the list, but anyway. Um, uh, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, of course, uh, the best known are the uh, so-called five poisons, you know, uh, we know. Uh, excessive desire, anger, jealousy, pride, the object, and we uh, visualize someone uh, who we have intense dislike towards. Someone who we, uh, 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 we do not uh, get along with and have very uh, low opinion of. And then, uh, by thinking about, again, all the things that uh, irritate us or the, all the things that makes us uh, angry about that person, uh, we uh, generate anger and uh, allow ourselves to get angry. And having done uh, so, uh, then uh, We um, uh, uh, take a, you know, a short, you know, like a, uh, a break uh, from that, you know, in terms of uh, not break as in, in terms of meditation, but uh, just uh, 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 you know, some kind of a uh, little bit of a break, and then uh, go back to the. Um, object of love again, and then uh, look at the uh, object of hate, and, uh, and then compare and contrast these two e experiences and these two emotions. And uh, again, analyze and see well, why, uh, what, why are they different and what is the difference. Um, So we uh, then go back and forth between the two. <clears throat> what, is, what is it like uh, being in this, being having loving feelings, and what is it like to have this uh, sort of uh, Hatred, a feeling of um, 
hostility. Again, um, from this, uh, we uh, realize that um, the mind, it's, uh, the mind is capable, you know, the mind is capable of, uh, uh, of producing these things. So, uh, at the end, um, it is not the objects themselves, but it's the mind that determines whether one is going to have a loving feeling or a, a hateful, a hateful feeling. So this is also like an extension of what we were doing this morning. It's sort of uh, uh, trying to uh, train ourselves in the, uh, in how we, how the mind itself is actually an independent agent. Because we are not at the mercy of uh, others. Uh, that uh, uh, we are not helpless uh, in having these kinds of emotions. You know, emotions are not like toothaches or or you know. Uh, uh, or um, headaches that um, uh, that you know we uh, you know, if we have a toothache then we are going to have a toothache. Um, but the negative emotions are not like uh, feelings. You know, um, feelings come with emotions, n negative and positive emotions. But feelings and emotions are different. So therefore, uh, you know, in this uh, instance also, we can see how we, uh, uh, you know, uh, by thinking about the person, by thinking about all the things that make uh, that uh, brings about that kind of loving feeling or that hateful, those hateful kind of uh, uh, revolting sort of um, very uncomfortable, unpleasant feelings in us. Um, we can see how that comes about. How, um, in other words, how, how even the body re is re responding uh, in, the, uh, in uh, uh, correspondence uh, with our thinking pattern. And that's, that's the thing. So we may think, or oh, these feelings are already there. You know, the, the body is a, actually reacting in this fashion. But we uh, do not realize that uh, by thinking about these things, then the uh, uh, body too then uh, uh, follows suit. So that is one, uh, uh, one kind of insight that one can have. You know, I'm trying to summarize. So. Uh, I'm not going into detail, but uh, that is one kind of insight. The other is that both of these two kinds of experiences uh, actually, again, do not have any kind of uh, real uh, solid texture to them, no real solid kind of uh, uh, definable characteristics to them. Um, the, the, these feelings are also sort of uh, a, a very... Um, um, what is the word? Um, uh, th th these feelings and so forth uh, are also like always in motion, or always in motion, always in movement. Um, uh, so they're not some kind of uh, solid, inert uh, uh, kind <coughs> of, uh, entities, but they are like uh, uh, you know they're always in movement, always in motion. So therefore, they are not substantial. And from Buddhist point of view, this is uh, uh, seen as a very uh, 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 you know, uh, useful insight to have. To realize that they are not substantial in itself uh, can uh, lift a, a huge burden off our shoulders. Uh, because if they are not substantial, then their potential to do harm is greatly reduced. But if they're not substantial, if they're substantial, uh, then their potential to do harm is that much greater. So if we can have first-hand experience, 
in how uh, transient they are, how uh, you know quickly they change. For example, you know one moment one is thinking, uh, you know loving thoughts, and then suddenly just just by thinking uh, differently, suddenly uh, one has opposite feelings and opposite emotions. So how suddenly, how quickly the whole thing can change, um, simply because the mind has changed. By changing the mind, by changing thinking patterns, then quickly um, the whole thing has changed. So by having this experience, you know, by having this experience, then uh, a huge burden uh, gets, uh, is lifted because uh, it is non-substantial. Whether it's one has a loving family or a uh, um, loving feeling, or uh, some kind of uh, resentful and uh, hateful uh, kind of feeling towards someone. Mm -hmm.